Taking the MCAT at the wrong time will make your pre-med journey much harder. I've helped thousands of pre-meds just like you get into top medical schools, and I've seen many more thousands of pre-meds shoot themselves in the foot by not taking the MCAT seriously. It's a tale as old as time. The pre-med pushes back the MCAT until the final year right before they apply. Then the stresses of school and extracurriculars cause these students to not study as much as they'd like. They perform poorly on their practice tests. They reach out to me and ask if they should take it anyway or push it back. And ultimately, it doesn't matter what they choose here. They have to push their entire application one year back. So now that we know that that happens every single single year to thousands of pre-meds, let's just not do that anymore. In this video, I'll tell you when is the best time to take the MCAT and how to optimize for MCAT success. So the best time to take it. I always recommend protecting an entire summer to studying for the exam. And at the end of that study period, take the MCAT. That means you're studying for the MCAT in the summer going into your junior year or in the summer going into your senior year. And that summer is protected entirely for the MCAT. At most, you're spending 20 hours a week doing other extracurriculars, smaller side projects, smaller volunteering gigs, but you're not doing anything else full time. That's the MCAT. And you'll find that things fall into place like dominoes pretty easily once you've established when you're going to take that exam. Of course, you want to make sure that you complete your MCAT prerequisites before you start studying. That means your bio series, your chem series, your physics series, Series, your OCHEM series and your biochemistry course should all be scheduled before that study period. These classes are your priorities and every other class, your Gen Chem, your math, your language, your English literature, studying Shakespeare's best hits, all of that stuff can go after the MCAT and after the application. So you can see that when you take the MCAT is high yield and it is one of the lowest hanging fruit that is easy to take care of. The reason tens of thousands of pre-meds ignore it is that it requires proactivity and intentionality years in advance. And that level of foresight can be difficult for pre-meds just trying to survive in the moment. So now that we figure out timing for the exam, let's figure out how to optimize for quality for the exam. First, you need to set your eyes on a goal. You need to have a target. I personally believe every pre-med should aim for a 528 because why wouldn't you? But what's also helpful at this juncture is having the foresight to think about your dream medical schools and where their MCAT scores live. For example, if you want to stay in Southern California, you're looking at USC, UCI, UC San Diego, UCLA. Those schools have published median MCAT scores. So you can look them up and triangulate a very reasonable reasonable MCAT goal, probably somewhere in the 515 to 520 range, given how competitive medical school admissions is today. So now you have a real tangible goal. If you score in that range, your foot will be in the door for your dream schools. So I know you're not applying to medical school right now, but this is a great time to look forward and figure out where your dream medical schools may live. You're certainly not beholden to them, but it helps you get and generate a reasonable MCAT target. Now, a lot of the stuff we're talking about here is advanced. It requires years of foresight and being intentional. And if figuring out your dream schools or triangulating your MCAT goals, those seem a little bit too overwhelming, I totally understand. Everything in the pre-med process is new and it all feels very high stakes. At Pre-Med Catalyst, our mentorship program helps pre-meds through every single step of the way. If it sounds helpful to have someone who has done this journey before and has helped pre-meds just like you, in fact, hundreds of pre-meds just like you, do the exact same thing, you might be interested in our mentorship program. Check our link in the bio for more. Okay, now at this stage, we have a goal MCAT date and a goal MCAT score. We have the fencing around our MCAT season. The next thing to do is to still gather more information, specifically about what you don't understand content-wise in the exam. So here, you have to take that leap and take a diagnostic exam. Take it seriously like you're actually taking the MCAT. What that means is take it at the right time of day, drive to a testing center or a library, take real breaks that are timed, and start to internalize and feel all those emotions of the MCAT's pace, the MCAT's difficulty, breaks, the length of the exam, all of that information, your body will be very, very anxious and afraid of, and that's totally normal. 
And at the end of that diagnostic exam, after you took a huge leap, you will score atrociously. And part of the growing pains of getting to medical school is being able to handle and learn from those uncomfortable situations. You're not there yet, and why would you be? You haven't even put in one day of study. But the diagnostic will give you vital information about where your strengths and your weaknesses lie. It'll tell you if you're naturally good at cars, or if you're atrociously heinous at something like biochem. And from there, you can find ways to appropriately divvy up your studying. And if you have the extra time, you'll know exactly where to put it. All right, now we've hit the diagnostic. We know our strengths. We have a target date. We have a target score in mind. Now, how do we optimize for the best studying possible? I try to keep the framework around studying as simple as possible. I personally don't overemphasize the structure of studying because while well, all the learning is done in the practice problems, in the practice tests, during your review sessions, and it's not done at the level of the study schedule. So getting to a reasonable study schedule in a reasonable amount of time is our goal here. This streamlined study schedule is exactly what we tell our students to do. And if you're starting to realize just how important your stats are to getting into medical school, the MCAT is only half the battle. We just did a video on how your GPA affects admissions odds here. And if you're interested, you can check that one out. So for our students, we break down MCAT studying to two phases. Phase one is a bit more content dominant. Here, 70% of your time will be focused on content review, 30% on practice problems, and you'll take a weekly practice exam. Your goal here is to build a foundational fund of knowledge that sits at the bottom of your MCAT pyramid while slowly working in practice problems and certainly never forgetting the length, the pace, and the difficulty of a practice MCAT exam. We'll spend half of our MCAT season here, and truthfully, you should expect very little to change when it comes to your growth on your practice exams. You haven't ramped up your practice problem volume, and you still have many more practice tests to do. Then, when we've built a foundation of content, we've dotted our I's and crossed our T's, we'll move on to phase two, which is more practice problem heavy. Here, we flip our focus on its head, and now we're doing 70% practice problems and only 30% content review, really only looking at the things that we got wrong because we didn't understand the concept or remember a fact about a subject. No longer are we just reading textbooks just to read them. We have very focused, targeted content learning based on the deficiencies we found on our practice problems. Here, we'll also double our practice exam volume to twice a week. This 70-30 split is simple and it's effective. Remember that just because a study plan is complicated does not mean that it's better for you necessarily. The principles are straightforward. Start with content review, integrate practice problems from day one. Then when you've built some foundation of knowledge, move away from the comfortable textbooks and the comfortable learning videos and move towards the uncomfortable practice problem sets and the uncomfortable practice tests. Over your study season, we recommend that you complete at least seven to eight practice exams and you'll know you're ready when the last two to three exams are in range of your target MCAT score. Many pre-meds also ask about MCAT courses, and I find them very useful for a certain type of students, but very harmful for another. But often you will move at the pace of the lowest common denominator of your class. For example, if a student has a question on stoichiometry, a concept that you've already mastered, the entire class will pause, wait with that student, and relearn a concept that may not be useful. Also, make sure to understand these MCAT promises. No one is going to guarantee a 515 plus score. And the stats that you're seeing, X percent of pre-meds who took this course got XYZ score is misleading. Statistics apply to populations, not individuals. Just because that population scored a certain way doesn't mean that that's going to be extrapolated directly to your own journey. Also, you don't know how the company is splitting up their data. They can cut their data so that only students who scored above a 507 on the diagnostic and took every single one of their practice exams, completed all of their 3,000 practice problems, ended up getting above a 515. You can start quickly seeing how that whittles down the population to a very, very select group of students that may not be representative of you. Remember, the person who scores a 507 on a diagnostic exam without a single day of studying is likely already going to do extremely well. Ultimately, MCAT prep courses can be a huge help for those who struggle keeping schedule and keeping pace. 
But if you're engaged and you're invested and you do best by flying at your own pace, by the beat of your own drum, then taking a course may very well slow you down. When all is said and done, remember the overall context behind the MCAT. Remember how much adcoms really care about this score. The MCAT is lever two in a total of six levers. The MCAT is combined with lever one, your GPA. And while your GPA and your MCAT can get your foot in the door, they by themselves will not earn you a seat at the table. And of course, keep in mind the opposite as well. Too many students have five strong levers, strong GPA, strong extracurricular, strong letters of recommendation, strong written application and interviews. Holistic admissions means that every part matters. And in a world where pre-meds are so competitive, if you have a sinking ship of an MCAT score, that is clear enough of a reason for admissions committees to say no. All of this, again, is to underscore the importance of taking this exam seriously. This is how to set yourself up for success on the MCAT. That's all from me. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.